The next speaker is called Code Freezer. The title is Analyzing the Coalition Agreement Tools and Methods to Support the Agreement of the New German Government Coalition. He is Enterprise Engineer and Enterprise by the Kangaroo. He calls himself a fact checker who likes to uh, examine things. If you have questions, you can put them on Twitter or Mastodon or IRC. So, here we go. Hello and welcome everyone. In the following 30 minutes, I would like to tell the story of Koala Kid and myself, how we used quantitative text analysis and explorative reading, and this time applied to the coalition agreement of the new German government, which we call CA in the following. My name is Kurt Frieser. let's go. On the 24th of November, three things happened. There was a birthday in my family, the cookbook has been published, and the coalition agreement has also been published. Some people call it the Yellow Pages. On the 25th of November, this little comic strip with the comic, uh, kangaroo appeared in my tweet feed, and I realized that I should really deal, have a look at the coalition agreement. There were too many strange things that I heard about it up front. And then the call for papers for RC3 happened. So let's see, I'm going to put something in there and I'll put something in there shortly before the deadline. And it was accepted. So here we are. So what do you need to do? Um, when you do a talk, you need to uh, somehow capture people's attention, sex cells, scandals, headlines, and so on. And we didn't have to look far. We looked at this. 177 pages are, is the, is the total, 76 of these pages are thin air. So please don't print this out. So here's the attention. And we, of course, want to change the world. And there are just this coalition agreement in front of us. So what do we do now? So let's take it apart in four different perspectives. We can take a look at it as source code, which we are familiar with. Um, so we can try to apply this to the coalition agreement. What if we look at it as a form of specification for the next legislation period? Or what if we look at it as an object model? Is there any point in this? So, let's see. And finally, we look at the CAS uh, literature because I would like you to actually read it because this is what our government will base directions on for the next four years. So, coalition agreement as source code, the first chapter. So, I mean, of course, this is not Java or Golang or Ruby. This is German. German as a programming language. So, if we have a programming language, um, we need to think about the atomic parts of a programming language. So, structural types, the letter is a character limited by two spaces. A sentence is usually terminated by a full stop. And a line feed terminates a paragraph usually. Apart from that, there are higher text design structures which are usually structured according to the DKAT principle, which stands for document, chapter, section, and topic. There are nine chapters, 22 sections, and in total 200 topics in the coalition agreement. 
counting. So, um, that's another thing if you want to count something to prepare it afterwards. Page numbers and line numbers are not really that useful because they're not independent of the device. They depend very much on the formatting. So, lines of code is just not being used anymore today in code metrics because they can be very different, uh, different style guides. We don't really count letter characters because this, they don't have very any content. Words can be grouped into nouns, verbs, and adjectives without uh, stop words. And this is not such a bad idea as a base for later on. Now, the number of sentences is the most meaningful and reasonable uh, base for me. So this is um, comparable to NCSS, which is example. There's an interesting slide deck here, reference down below. So what can we do with those metrics? So for instance, let's look at the number of words, which are grouped into these different groups, nouns, verbs, and adjectives. And you can see what are the most frequent nouns. Well, of course, Germany, Deutschland is high up there. The commune, cooperation, digitalization, country a bit less. So, if I look for climate, for instance, it's quite small, climate protection even smaller, financing is not that large. In the case of verbs, it gets a bit more difficult. So, uh, verbs themselves in the programming language of German, uh, this, some verbs are simply more frequent such as to want, to must, etc. But if this has any relevance, that other verbs are much smaller, this is hard to say without having a clearer semantic um, association. So adjectives, we can see words such as good, public, digital, quite large, which is great. But even here, I'm not sure if I should be worried that words like transparent or ecological are quite small, so not very frequent. I mean, this is just counting words. doesn't necessarily mean very much. Here's a link where you can build such word clouds yourselves, under wordvolcan.com. What else can you do when you're counting words? So, in addition to the raw numbers, you can look at the relations between words. Some are quite close together, such as Europe and EU, for instance, national strength and protection, which are grouped together here, or here to lead to create access regulation, which is a small cluster here. So, based on these distances, you can also create graphs, or you can show it in a so-called self-organizing map of words. We will look at this later on. So, here I counted the different sentences in the 22 sections. So, these are the 22 sections in the different chapters. And we can see climate protection and socio-ecological market economy is the dominating topic, which groups together ecology and economy. That's also the reason why this is so large. But in my opinion, this is the right focus. And the digital revolution, um, this is probably where the three parties agreed on. And there's one chapter where there's nothing. Finances doesn't have any content? Well, not quite. I mean, what happened here is that the different topics were not grouped into sections here. 
Dokument gesehen habe. <laughs> so, I thought it was quite funny because I think they did this on purpose, since it would not have fitted on the pages if they had actually formulated this. So let's look at the different topics, the 200 topics. Um, this is probably a bit hard to read in the video. So I prepared something here. Here's an SVG graphic, so we can zoom in. And so let's look at the topic of economy and ecology and the market economy. This is sorted now by the size of topic blocks. So they are becoming smaller and smaller from top to bottom. So for instance, uh, railway traffic and car traffic is not so far apart. Uh, what if there's animal protection, there's bicycle traffic, two sentences, no pedestrian traffic. But as we see, there are financial topics, so it's not all that bad. Uh, interesting topics such as money laundering. Uh, you might remember F FIU, Financial Intelligence Units, uh, something cyber, cyber, cyber. Let's see what happens there. But you can get an overview here about the 200 subjects as they are split across the different chapters. And this is also linked in the slides, so you can look at that directly. So, so much for what can I see if I just count around and uh, display what I've counted? Right, let's look at the coalition agreement as a specification. Uh, so here's a small thought experiment. Uh, let's assume the people are the customer and the state is the enterprise and the goals are called objectives and a legislative period is a PI, a program increment. Does that sound familiar to you? That sounds kind of like safe. And this is indeed um, following the SAFE methods, or inspired by them. And if you find SAFE interesting, you can look into that, and it is linked there. It's very interesting variant to bring together various development teams, combining many um, existing things such as Scrum, Scrum DevOps, <laughs> release engineering, release on demand, something. And it's customer driven. Uh, community driven even so you yourself can get engaged and uh, work on this uh, framework as well it's also version so it's on version 5.1 or maybe 5.2 i think 5.1 at the moment and the interesting thing is the colleagues who are working on this and uh, continue working this they work according to safe which is also interesting but we want to look into the coalition agreement. So there it's about goals or objectives mainly. So the objectives are the most interesting thing. And SAFE has an interesting offer here. According to SAFE, these objectives should be smart, which means specific so they're, and measurable. So they have to be measurable, achievable. You have to be able to achieve them. Uh, my first idea here is spontaneously um, the thing with uh, learning the election age, uh, starting to vote from 16, I am very much in favor of this, and I think they can do this for Europe, um, but for the federal elections, they need a two-thirds majority, so this might not be really achievable, even though I like it as a goal. Reasonable, so objects have to be reasonable and time-bounded, so they have to be able to achievable within uh, PI. And I did one thing here, which is to uh, look at the year numbers from the coalition agreement and see where are they. So I took uh, some number. We have six before the legislative period, 80 within the legislative period. And I know, OK, this is achievable within this period of time where this coalition is actually in the government. But there are also goals that are outside of the legislative period. And I think this is not so ideal because in those might not be really, really achievable. And there's a fair point. You can have larger goals, so you have to deal with longer periods of time. But I would expect that 
there is something described for these longer goals, something that you can do within this legislative period to reach these goals. So I wanted to look into this a bit further, a bit closer into these 40 goals. So I built this uh, timeline with all the mentions of years outside of the legislative period. And um, if you are on the slide deck and you can't read this, then there will be a link to an HTML version of this outside of this slide deck. And it's interesting, there's, there's a positive example here. In 2026, they want to achieve something which is outside of the legislative period, but until then, they want to do something which is within the legislative period. So it can look like this. So that's how we can do it and work with it. And if we look at, well, I think this word uh, has gone through the press enough already. I don't need to say anything about it. But you can see there are a lot of things in here. Uh, well, I don't know. It's not really intended that it's achieved within this period of time. And so these objectives aren't really smart. There's so much to, for the coalition agreement as a specification. Now let's look at it as an object model. What object model? So um, Kodak had also looked at me strangely about this. Oh, that's architecture. It's weird. Uh, can't you remember all of these discussions we had in the project already? Agile, or is it waterfall? Is it Anstand e.V. versus Agile Manifesto, the big upfront, or something evolutionary? A0 models versus no plan at all, docs as code, design as code, diagrams as code, architecture as code, something as a service. Oh, we know all of this. And within this field of tensions, Simon Braun thought of something interesting and called it C4. And C4 is uh, not related to the Cologne Chaos Club. It's also not the explosive. Uh, C4 means, according to Simon Brown, as abstraction level, which or four abstraction levels, which is a kind of missing link in the UML. In UML, we have all kinds of uh, artifacts, but we don't have any idea. Or, well, in SysML maybe a bit, but we don't really have an idea otherwise of how we can structure larger object models uh, according uh, looking at the level of detail. And so he thought, let's look at these four levels of details. Context, container, and that doesn't mean Docker containers, but that we could talk about chapters and sections here, and components, those are the uh, basic packages. And then there's the code, so the text itself. And in those four abstraction layers, uh, Simon thinks in these levels. And if you want to read about it, I've linked this, of course, again. Also about the debate of agile versus architecture. There's a nice slide deck, uh, very amusing to read. And all right. So what do we do with this now? Uh, context, for instance. So we could start like this, a very simple diagram. So that's a completely minimalist uh, uh, C4 model on the system context level. We have the government, we have the coalition agreement, we have a relation between them, which is the uh, government follows, of course, unconditionally the coalition agreement. And we could uh, split this up further. The government consists of ministries, of course, the coalition agreement consists of chapters, and then there's some relations between them. And I uh, blow this up a little bit. Uh, some some information on the side here. PlantUML is often used um, for diagrams as code to, to create architectural diagrams like this. But there is for PlantUML a C4 plugin. So it's linked here on GitHub. You can download it from there. And then there's this address that you can't quite read, but you can use this. And then you can very simply create C4 models with PlantUML. Um, as I said here, we have some um, ministries. Carl is in the Ministry of Health. We have the um, Ministry of Finances or the Economy, the Traffic Ministry. They all want to um, implement the objectives of the coalition agreement, and they form the cabinet between them. And within this context, Simon Brown talks about the comparison to Google Maps. 
So if you have continents and then countries and cities, and within the cities you see the details, and I'd already talked about this self-organized word map, and which you can create with Carcoda uh, out of a text, and this might be an idea for how you um, can create these word maps in this direction. All right. So now we have the context here, but we also want to manage this object model, of course. And there are several applications and tools for that, where you can manage object models. Uh, there's Star UML, there's Viral Paradigm, or something Architect, which I quite like personally. And there I can um, manage my structures in there. But Enterprise Architect, uh, UML, XMI is also smart. Um, angle brackets, XML is not really so modern. I don't really know why, but today you like to do it with JSON or YAML. So I did this as well. So I looked at the agreement as JSON or YAML. And um, during all of this preparation and arrangement, I wrote some Python again for some in a while, which was also fun. And I finally also uh, created a useful table of contents for the coalition agreement where you can actually read um, and see the connections. And there I had the idea um, if I want to put anything into a, a object model, then it might be useful to have all of these um, parts uh, num numbered by bibliographically. So then I know I am in T2111 in modernizing the uh, public infrastructure, something. And here I'm in subject to uh, section one or whatever, section two, chapter two, subject seven. And I always have a context there where I currently am. And then it doesn't matter if I'm printed on A4 or read it on an ebook reader or something else. All right. And so what do I have now after um, taking this apart analytically and putting it into an object model? So what can I do with these ideas? Well, I can, for instance, um, put these D-cut elements into, uh, and I can add annotations to them. We talked about smart already in the specifications, so we could introduce a ranking there. We could have acceptance criteria. We could also just associate it with the ministers, go through an icon, or with the party, uh, add the colors of each party to annotate it, or um, at the time to read each element, and we could link these Descartes elements and um, create relationships between them, or add literature and code metrics. So that's some ideas that you could do. But also you could um, put these entities that you've put apart, um, place them in new context with these generators. Or maybe you have another idea. So this is where your idea comes in. What could you do if you have um, text like this in an object model? What could you do with it? I was talking just about um, smart rankings and with objectives, if you remember. Those are the objectives. And in PI, you have per objective these BVs, the business values, which means the stakeholder says, what is uh, what business value does this contribute if I implement this objective. And so this is annotated before you actually do it. And then after an increment, you, uh, the person who annotated this comes back and says, what is the actual value now, the AV? So what was the actual value of this that it contributed? So this might be an interesting method to uh, analyze how the objectives were met during a legislative period or to generate something, spaceships of different kinds, for instance, museums maybe. And here I've found something interesting, uh, which you can look at or listen to directly after this talk, which is the Everything Exhibition, which takes different structures. I think currently is wiki structures, Wikipedia structures, if I'm not mistaken, and then generates 3D exhibition spaces. Das finde ich sehr spannend. Das gucke ich mir nachher auf jeden Fall noch mal im Anschluss an. Ja, ihr seht, für 22 fürs nächste Jahr habe ich ein neues Hobby. 
ähm, wird noch das eine oder andere noch bei uns. Ja, das heißt, ja. So viel zum Thema KV als Objektmodell. Kommen wir nun zum letzten. So, Kurs. now on to the last chapter: uh, Coalition Agreement as a form of literature. It is, of course, a um, specialized text, but it can also be simply read. But why? I had problems with that at the start. I didn't quite know why, but when I was looking at the PDF, I, it was really hard for me to just start reading. Maybe they want to keep the secret or don't really want people to read it. So then I looked at the document itself and noticed a few things. For instance, the distance between lines 1.5 really blows up the text, makes it hard to read. The, um, the page margins are quite large, the differences between paragraphs also. But the yeah, the block alignment on A4 is really hard to read those long lines on an A4 page is really difficult. Another thing is the numbering or the lack of numbering of the different topics. It's really hard when you just uh, jump into the text and you hit a topic and you don't really know where exactly you are. I mean, is this about international things, about the economy? So I would suggest to also number the third level, the level of topics. But this is really blown up. I mean, these are the 177 pages of the agreement. So if you simply set page margins normal, paragraph distance normal, single spacing, left alignment instead of block alignment, the result is 101 pages instead of 177. I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as you don't print it out, but imagine if you print the agreement 1,000 times, then 76,000 pages would be superfluous. I mean, there's probably enough interested people who will do this? Maybe a thousand is too high, but I don't know. So 76,000 pages uh, would be completely surplus. 43% paper, water, COT would have been wasted, which I think is a bit of a pity. So why not in a more advanced manner, more progressive digital um, climate and energy saving and device independent and saving money using one of those formats here? So I don't want to complain, I just also want to do. So I built different versions in HTML, the way I would like to read it, which is really nice for me personally. I also created an EPUB version, which you can read on your ebook reader. Also, I converted everything to Markdown for using GitLab or even atomized the whole agreement with all the different topics and sections which you can download in form of a zip file extracted on your console and have a look at it. And you can easily navigate it. So it's interesting to read the collision agreement on a shell. I put something together for you here. So with a word tool called WordLiga, I created a this playlist here, which says um, how long it would take approximately to read each section. I mean, you can just jump in there. It doesn't have to be done from start to finish. And here it says how long this would take approximately to read to the whole thing. So interesting is the idea of Birte Schneider, who reads the entire Coalition Agreement, you can have a look at that on YouTube. So, thanks a lot. This was it. One last thing. No session without it. 
So, I mean, I was complaining a bit, but if you really look at the coalition agreement uh, through pink glasses, there are quite a few things which are really good. So, paragraph 219a will be abolished. Um, election age of 16, I think it's great. Legalization of cannabis at last. So, DB Nets, uh, the railway company, will be uh, gemeinwohl oriented, uh, common good oriented. Uh, nuclear energy has to bear their cost themselves. Chances for legal residents of foreign nationals after four to six years. So this is great, which allows people to enter society who are normally marginalized. And a legal right to open data. This is fantastic. So Frag den Staat will be delighted. And I'm really curious if, for instance, the German standards will be open. A right for anonymity is great. Open source and multi-cloud for public um, procurement. So lots of great stuff. If you want to read more about this, especially cyber, Topics, have a look at netspolitik.org. Here's a link to Novena. However, on the other side, these are words that are not anywhere to be found in the coalition agreement. So I've compared the large ones with the uh, Google findings. So interesting one, most interesting ones, uh, well, the largest one is bicycle, okay. But it is, there's nothing talking about fracking, there's nothing about a um, limit, a uh, speed limit on highways. Uh, it is in there, uh, but it says that it will not exist, the tempo limit, so it's not on this map. And I think we have to be careful because a lot of our governments previously, uh, they weren't really my government, so I wasn't in the majority. But now you might think, like myself, I'm voted for one of these three parties, so now I feel responsible for this. So I want to check uh, that we want to take this uh, coalition agreement as a promise. It's not yet law. Uh, you still have to change a lot of things around it, but we have to be careful that it uh, turns out well. And now I'm finished with all the uh, thematic stuff. Just one more last thing, uh, saying thank you. Uh, to Bleed Track, for instance, for the Koala kit here, which I loved a lot. Maybe you recognize the drawing style already. Uh, remote Rhein Ruhr stage. Um, I can't even say it anymore for the stage here, which is very, very cyber. Uh, very well done. I was very happy that you accepted my uh, proposal. And there's a lot of uh, f my family ha has been very patient and has had some feedback and has um, not had had as much of me this Christmas as I should. But then you can reach the project URLs here. I've given you already. That we have a small Trello where we plan what we might do there. We have the slides, of course. I will try to, uh, with some luck, maybe I've even done it during the presentation, to upload the slides so you might be able to find them in the pre-talks, uh, on the pre-talks site, and you can download them there directly. And you can reach me in Rocket Chat as Code Freezer. You can send me an email. You can find me in the Fediverse. Um, I'm often also on Slack uh, because the colleagues are there. And that's uh, really it. Thanks a lot for your attention. And until next time, see you. All right. We also say thank you very, very much for the talk, which was very interesting. And I think a lot of uh, people in the audience will agree. And I would not have thought that there is so much um, being saved. And there's also a lot of questions. So I'll just start with the first question. What was the base of the data for the uh, shown um, points of interest to reach the um, something? I forgot. So the database was the coalition agreement text. All right, next question. Couldn't you also look into 
the uh, party programs of the parties and see what you need to look into. Yeah, that's interesting. So the comparative analysis of the election programs to the coalition agreement. Um, I would like to approach this in the next couple of weeks or months because I like to know who influenced what in which way. The election programs themselves Sure, can have a look at that, and who wants to do that, um, just contact me and I'll provide you with them. All right, that's very kind. Then, next question already. Is the coalition agreement really um, meant to be read like this? Isn't it just a window uh, uh, talk? Or isn't more the way to the agreement the goal that they, the parties form working groups and then um, are forced to build teams uh, similar to what is um, what happens with mission statements in companies. That's a very long question. I think we can summarize it as isn't there more talk and it's meant more for team building and uh, self-image. Sure, I mean, I totally agree with that, especially chapter one which was kind of um, a self-exploration journey and they also those parties have to somehow get together because they used to be quite distinct and it's i think it's totally appropriate that they do this in the form of a coalition agreement they also didn't just write this down so that they can then just have quite time i mean we're going to look at they actually can't implement this and then just talk around. And one more question. Um, can you work on versioning this with Git in the next five years? Sure, of course. Um, I also want to include the election programs in Git and also the coalition agreements of previous years. So I'm going to I'll be updating the repository regularly. Right, then I have one more question. Did you enjoy working on this or is it just uh, tedious after some time? Ah, yeah, I created um, also a plan for next year because I was really excited about this. And if anyone else wants to join, just get in touch with me. All right, very, very nice. And if you want to continue working this, um, get in touch with Code Freezer. And thank you again very much for this very cool talk. Yeah, thank you very much also from my side. If you want to leave me a comment, you can go to the pre talks page. There's a place for this. There you can add some. You can also visit me on my GitHub repository, make an issue, or even a merge request. Thank you. Meldet euch bei Codefreezer und noch einmal vielen, vielen Dank für diesen super coolen Talk.